you know, I was without a child. Mm -hmm. And so when I went into the prison, I had a mishap about a day or two after where I fell mm -hmm. and I hit my head. You know, I had to be rushed to the hospital. And when I got to the hospital, that is when I came to the reality that the baby was still very much alive inside of my body. Oh my God. And so that took me to a place of wondering, you know, what, 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 what was really happening with me. Mm -hmm. I, not only was I in shock, but something started to, to, to happen inside of me. There, there was something that was, some dots began to connect. Mm -hmm. And so there was a lady inside of the prison that I, you know, ended up having a conversation with. She was, you know, they call her evangelist. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that she said oh, to hold me... Hold on, hold on. Did you say an evangelist in an prison? An evangelist was in the prison. Come on, sister. <laughs> <laughs> and one of the things that she said to me was, what would your answer be to God if you had killed that prophet that was inside of it? Mm. And so that day when she said that to me, it actually, you know, when somebody said it shift a nerve, yes. it ruffled my feathers. So let me ask you, I have to just squeeze something in there. Is that, was the baby a boy? It was a boy. <laughs> the prophetic. So come on, tell us more. And, and so what would have happened after that is the Sunday, I went to the church that they have inside of the prison mm -hmm. and there is this minister and I keep repeating this mm -hmm. because this is how my road to salvation started and I have to say it all the time. Yeah. There is this church that came in there called House of God. They're on Waltham Park Road mm -hmm. and they traveled with a minister by the name of Minister Fabian Steel. I think he's now Bishop Fabian Steel. Mm -hmm. And the, the, the message that he preached that Sunday was do not let the devil end your story. Mm. And for for some reason that word connected with me it connected with my mind yeah. and it connected with my heart so much so that it took root mm. it was so profound that i could not let it go yeah. and some a, a change began to take place in my life at, on that day in 2010 mm -hmm. and i remember praying after that and i said lord there has to be more than this yeah I began to reflect how I grew up in church with my grandmother, mm -hmm. how I used to clean the benches at church, how I used to sing at church. So you were a church girl? I grew up in church, <laughs> praise the Lord. <laughs> and I began to reflect, and, and on that day I remember surrendering and I said, Lord, have your way. Yeah. And I and I gave my life to God that day with my pregnant self mm -hmm. and told the Lord that I surrender. But I'm listening to your story. Are you aware that it seems to me that within the first week of entering prison, you gave your heart to the Lord. You realize that? The very first week. My God. So, how long were you in prison for? I was there for almost five years. Wow. Things that we miss when we, you know, trying to have a relationship with God is that God is intentional. Yeah. There are times when a lot of us, you know, might have bad experiences or have a mishap in life mm -hmm. and we do not understand that there's always a bigger picture yeah. because God knows who we are. Right. The fact is, you know, God could have allowed me to leave the prison the day after I went there. That's true. He's That's true. God. Mm -hmm. But God knew who I was. Mm -hmm. He knew that my transformation would come from me being in a confined place. Yes. Because the truth is I was not... I was in prison way before I went into a physical prison. Yeah. And it took being in that environment for me to understand and see that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What happened to I, I realized um, about this life that we live in that people are seasonal. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And because 